closely. We'll also be putting these images up online if you want to see them. But one of those little dots there is the International Space Station traveling at 17,500 miles per hour. Uh, here's another one from our photographer uh, in Wyoming. Same concept, capture the space station. We knew exactly when the space station was going to be flying, what its orbit was, and when it was going to cross the sun. And, and look here, it's just an amazing sight. Uh, I'm really proud of our photographer for getting these shots and proactively trying to get something that no one else probably has and thinking through and getting this, this, uh, this great image. So um, let's uh, take a few questions from social media. I want to remind our viewers at home um, that you can ask questions to us here on the set and on social media with the hashtag Eclipse2017. So uh, why don't we bring it back here to the stage. Um, first question is um, from Twitter. Uh, what if we wear sunglasses instead of Eclipse glasses? Will we actually be able to see the Eclipse uh, the sunglasses help? Does it give you any sort of protection? No, no. That's a definitely a no-no. You should not wear sunglasses, normal sunglasses. Always wear the actual sunglasses that are made for solar viewing, like the ones that I'm hand having here right now in my hand. And if you don't have the sunglasses, you never look directly at the sun. You look like you do an indirect projection of that eclipse. Never look at the sun without the proper safety. So another question here comes from Deborah from Facebook. So the sun rises in the east and sets in the west, uh, and the earth rotates in clockwise motion. Please explain how it starts in the west and ends in the east. Well, so the, uh, the earth is rotating from west to east, but actually the moon is moving faster, about 3,400 miles an hour, casting a shadow down on the earth, which is rotating about 1,700 miles an hour. And that actually means that the shadow is moving from west to east across the Earth at about somewhere between 1,200 to 1,800 miles per hour, depending on where you are on the Earth. Okay, great. We have uh, another one. I think we have time for another one. Uh, Tina from Facebook asked, if I place a lens from the Eclipse viewing glasses over viewfinder on my iPad, could I successfully video the Eclipse or would it fry my camera? Yeah, you can actually look with the iPad or your phone to the Eclipse. The only thing is, you have to be very careful not to look at it with your own eyes without the actual safety glasses. Never look at it through any lens. Okay. Uh, this is Mickey from Facebook. Uh, hey, NASA, NASA, can the International Space Station see the shadow of the moon uh, crossing America from space? Can they, do they have that view when they're looking from space? They do, and that's what we're hoping to see from them. Yes. Excellent. So, John, we're going to come back to you. So I think we're going to go back to uh, Sean, our meteorologist. Let's learn more about how NASA is studying the Earth and Sun relationship during this eclipse. Sean, can you tell us more about that? Right. Thanks, Dwayne. So during the eclipse, the moon acts like a giant cloud as it passes over areas in the path of totality, ca casting a large shadow on Earth's surface. Now, the footage you're seeing right now shows a solar eclipse that occurred in March of 2016 over Indonesia. That experience helped us determine how best to study today's eclipse. These images were taken by NASA's EPIC instrument aboard NOAA's Deep Space Climate Observatory, or DISCOVER. It's just one of the instruments we'll be using today to study the eclipse as we monitor changes in Earth's energy balance. Scientists have made extensive atmospheric measurements during eclipses before, but this is the first opportunity to collect coordinated data from both the ground and from a spacecraft that observes the entire sunlit Earth during an eclipse. Dwayne, back to you. Thank you, Sean. Okay, so now we have a special guest with us today, the Associate Administrator for NASA's Office of Communication, Jen Ray Wong. Jen Ray, welcome. Dwayne, thank you. So I, happy to be here. Oh, it's an exciting day. It's a I'm wonderful glad you're day. to join the team here. And our next location you are pretty familiar with, I'm sure. I'm very blessed that I do know something about the great state of Nebraska. I've actually lived there for the last decade. And I have friends and family who are watching there from the Path of Totality. I have to tell you, this is by far the biggest thing that's happened in Nebraska as of recent. It's absolutely fabulous. I have had friends from high school and college calling me up, Facebook messaging me, asking where they can get their glasses, where they should be viewing from. So it's just a really exciting day for everyone who's watching along the Path of Totality. It's also a really exciting day for NASA. And in fact, this gives us an opportunity to look forward as well. And we have a future study that we are going to be doing for the stu to study the sun. NASA is going to launch a new spacecraft next year, the Parker Solar Probe, and it will fly directly into the solar atmosphere. The mission will provide first of its kind data. And for more information on this future mission, let's go to Beatrice, Nebraska, where Vince Whitfield from NASA's Langley Research Center is standing by. 
He's at Homestead National Monument, where the National Park Service has coordinated an eclipse viewing. Vince? And just just, just in, I think uh, we're having, Vince is gonna come up shortly, Jen Ray, so we're gonna go back with an image, but we will be doing Nebraska as soon as we can. So a shout out to the great state. Thank you. Okay, folks, um, Jody and Alex, um, this is a different view here. What are we seeing, uh, Alex? Well, so we're looking at uh, a different wavelength of visible light. It's called calcium K. So this is light that's produced by excited calcium. And this is showing us the sun as the moon is moving over it. And in fact, if you look over to the left, on the edge of the yeah. sun, you actually see sunspots. A sunspot, yeah. And these are regions that Heliophysicists like myself and Jari are most interested in because that's where solar explosions originate from. In fact, the magnetic fields that come up into the corona that we see during the total solar eclipse originate from those sunspots. Yeah. Actually, this sunspot had a, a solar flare yesterday. Right, and I believe this is coming from, from Carbondale, so that's now it's it's uh why is it purple is that what, what's the that's color actually mean? that's actually the uh the the light and the color of the light in the filter the color is a bluish light and so it comes out as a purple color um, but it's in it is a type of visible light it's one we look at quite often from both space and the ground and look in the sun now i see what i see some black thingies look like a little river you see it over there and then a corner on the left yeah that's the sunspot uh, now, what's a sunspot, just for our audience here? Those are the regions where most of the space weather actually originates, the solar flares, the coronal mass ejections, are regions of the sun that have very uh, complicated magnetic fields. And these are where the, most of the magnetic energy is actually uh, released. Right, so those are regions of super intense magnetic field, thousand times stronger than the Earth's magnetic field and those have lots of energy and they drive space weather. Okay, I think that's why we didn't get the Nebraska feed right now. Those things cause that, I think, right? That's right, we're getting a little glitch. Well, hopefully we get Nebraska. Okay, Sean, we're going back over to you. We'll talk about moon shattering. That's right, Dwayne. We've got some really incredible imagery for you. This is again from the GO-16 weather satellite just launched last year by NASA for our friends at NOAA. And what you're seeing in the uh, western portion of this image is actually the moon's shadow being cast over parts of the path of totality. And, of course, you see the cloud cover across the U.S. as well. And as I was telling you earlier, it's actually looking pretty good for most of the western parts of the U.S. that are in the path of totality. Uh, not so good for maybe parts of the uh, central U.S. Uh, where we've got some thunderstorm activity developing uh, and expected to develop uh, later today, this afternoon, for places like uh, Nebraska, parts of Nebraska and uh, Missouri and, and northern Illinois, so maybe north of Carbondale. And then gets better again, as you uh, see, uh, in terms of cloud cover as we move further east toward Charleston here. But here in Charleston, we still have some breaks in the cloud. Where the sun is, it's still obscured. But we are able to actually see some of the uh, partial eclipse here in Charleston through some of the breaks in cloud. But again, really wanted to show you guys that imagery from GO-16 satellite from NOAA showing you the uh, moon's shadow actually being cast over parts of the western United States right now. With that, Dwayne, I'm going to hand it back over to you. Thanks, Sean. Now, as a reminder, our broadcast is tracking the total solar eclipse as it crosses the United States. It's moving along a path of totality. That's a 70-mile wide path sweeping across the entire nation. Over 12 million people live inside the path of totality. Plus, it's estimated that close to 7 million people have traveled to cities within the path of totality. I know that today is truly a day of celebration as people gather in cities and festivals to view today's celestial event. So let's, let's get into the cultural impact here, guys. Um, Alex, what's your take on the cultural impact of these eclipses? Well, you know, this is really such a, a, a fantastic opportunity to connect the nation and, in fact, the world with nature's, one of nature's most amazing celestial events. And this is something that we, as uh, working at NASA, are really excited to be able to share. And, in fact, 
We've even worked with some of our colleagues in other parts like the U.S. Postal Service. Yes, the U.S. Postal Service actually create a special stamp for this event. Right. Fact, so what I want to do, yes. let's talk about the stamp. Sure. But Jen Ray Tossed in Nebraska, we, the sunspots are gone, so let's go to Nebraska. Vince Whitfield, are you there? Hi, we're at the Homestead National Monument of America. This is a great location to watch the eclipse, and we've staked out a good spot here on the prairie. Even though the weather isn't cooperating, this is still an excellent event. We're also very prepared. Please make sure to use your protective glasses when viewing the eclipse wherever you are. You can cause serious damage to your eyes if you don't take precautions while watching. And there are a lot of people watching. As you can tell, the festivities, just like the eclipse, are in full swing. I'm joined by Chief Park Ranger Susan Cook. Hey Vince, how are you? Great Susan, thanks for joining me today. Please tell us about this amazing uh, place and what's going on behind us. Well, we are at Homestead National Monument of America. We are a national park site dedicated to telling the story of homesteading. 30 states, 4 million people, 10% of the United States was homesteaded. The head of a household, anybody could own land as long as you could be a U.S. citizen. You got 160 acres. It's how we settled the West. We built our democracy, we built our economy, settling the West through this law. That is just so interesting. Now, I understand the Mayan calendar followed the solar eclipse calendar closely. Is, is that correct? Uh, it did. The, the, Mayan, the ancient Mayan used several different calendars to organize their secular and spiritual lives. Many of these calendars had strong roots in the motions of celestial objects, especially the sun and the moon. And the Hub calendar is a solar calendar of 365 days, subdivided into 18 months of 20 days, plus one month of five days, Another calendar is a Zulkan made of 260 days, subdivided into 13 months of 20 days. This calendar also has a resonance with eclipses, which occur about every 173 days. Every three sequences of eclipses aligns every two cycles of the Zulkan. Who could keep track of that, frankly? <laughs> <laughs> it's just amazing. Now, as a Chief Park Ranger, I have to congratulate you. This is a fantastic venue. Tell us about some of the activities you have planned. Well, actually, right now you can feel it getting darker, but we have stage performances going on. We have many NASA scientists. You can learn about planetary defense, how do we defend our, our, na our world. Uh, you have NASA scientists doing uh, other things. We have Native Americans. We have a Mayan calendar and sky program. We have folk music. We have um, all sorts of fiddle music. Lots going Lots on. Lots of things. Balloon launches. So if there's things all around us. It's really exciting and a lot of fun. Got to say, the amount going in here, Susan, is incredible. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you very much. Thanks for being here. Absolutely. And we're lucky enough to be joined by a real NASA scientist. Let me introduce you to Dr. Nikki Fox. Hi, Vince. How are you today? Great, Nikki. Thanks for joining us. Nikki is a space weather expert and a mission project scientist on NASA's Parker Solar Probe program. Thanks so much for joining us, Nikki. Today is a great day for you. Tell us why. Well, today I'm really excited. This is my first ever solar eclipse, and it's the only chance that we can see the corona um, with our naked eye. And the, I'm particularly excited because I'm working on NASA's project, uh, Parker Solar Probe mission, and we are going to fly into the corona. So if the clouds, clouds part here, you'll be able to see where our mission is flying. That's just incredible. Now, how close will you get to the sun? We will get to within 4 million miles, and I know that doesn't sound terribly close, but if I put the Earth and the Sun apart on a, on a football field, then we would be at the four-yard line. That's just amazing. Now, for you watching at home, that's kind of like traveling from Washington, D.C. to Philadelphia in about one second. Just incredible speeds. Now, how can you be so close to the Sun and not burn up? So we have a wonderful heat shield, um, but we also, the technology, it's been 60 years since this mission was first thought of, and it's only now that technology has caught up with our dreams. That's just amazing. Now, it looks like we're coming up to the moment of totality here on the prairie. What are some of the things we should be looking for? So if it clears, um, you should see a beautiful corona, um, and that it looks like a pearly, hazy crown around the sun. And in fact, it's called a corona because that's Latin for crown. Um, and then as it's going beautifully dark here, it's becoming twilight. You hear everyone going crazy here. Um, you should be able to start seeing stars, and we can actually see four planets um, this time. You should see Jupiter, Mercury, Mars, and Venus all in this night sky during the day. So it's just an amazing amazing experience and if you can't see the corona I do have a map of it here this is a 3d print that was done for me and it looks exactly it's a predict of what the corona looks like today so 
If it's cloudy, here's your corona. Now, it looks like the moment of totality is upon us. Let's just take the, the, let the guys at home have a few moments to take in the sights and sounds of the crowd as totality happens on the prairie. Oh, wow. And you can see the corona. And I may cry, but you can see the corona. Um, so now you're seeing this wonderful, hazy atmosphere. I don't need my glasses now, Vince, because we are in totality. Wow. And so this is the only time that it's safe to look. But right now you can see that hazy ring. Um, that is the chromosphere. It is looking a little bit sort of reddish. Um, yeah. And you just see there's all that, those red wisps are little prominences that are coming away from the sun. Wow. Um, unfortunately, it's, it, we can't quite see the stars yet yeah. because of the clouds. But my goodness, you can see the corona and that is an absolutely incredible, incredible sight. Yeah, um, this is just magnificent. It really is. Everything's kind of, well, other than the people hooting and hollering here, <laughs> everything else has gone quiet. The yeah. animals think it's nighttime. Yeah. Uh, there's this amazing sort of twilight view all around us. And just look at that corona. That is incredible. Absolutely incredible. Yeah, that's amazing. Yep. And um, the moon is going to continue. Uh, we've got about 2 minutes, 35 seconds of this amazing view. And then here we come. Here comes the diamond ring. So it is glasses on again time. Glasses on. And here it comes. There's the diamond ring. And that is the most spectacular sight. That's amazing. <laughs> that is just incredible. Um, and of course, the diamond ring you see because the moon is not a, um, a totally smooth sphere. And so you're seeing little spots of light peeping out between the craters on the moon. And my goodness, I'm sorry. I'm so excited. It's incredible. <laughs> yeah, it, it's hard to convey the excitement of the energy. There are 10,000 people on the prairie here at the Homestead National Monument of America. And the energy is just amazing. And they've been here, a lot of them have been here since six o'clock this morning and the atmosphere has been incredible. Everybody is happy and um, it, it has just been amazing. That's just amazing. Wow. Okay, Nikki, let's, right. let's bring you over to this Sorry. side. It looks like the moment of totality has passed us here. Yeah. Now, what should we be watching for in the moments after totality? In the moments after totality, you will start to see again the Bailey's bead. So we did see that diamond ring and I got super excited. Um, but as, as the, uh, the moon continues now to pass away, you'll start to see the solar surface come back. It's, come, it's becoming light again. Um, if we had any roosters here, they would actually be crowing. Um, so it's, it's just been...